Hello, hi, welcome again to Hope Alive with Mary. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys again. Apologies, we haven't had a um, video in the couple, last couple of weeks. Um, like, let me not blame it on anything. I take full responsibility. Anyway, we're back here now. And I'm here again to speak to you about a very important topic we started off two weeks ago. You know, I introduced you talking about we've all got a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice. We all have a choice. We all have a choice. A lot of things that we pass on, um, blaming people or blaming our circumstances, um, we wouldn't if we realize that life presents us with a choice. And um, thank you for the feedbacks I've received. Those who have reached out to us, uh, you know, spoken to me or say something about um, what they felt about the video um, or the message in the video. Thank you very much. So we're going to continue on that subject today about choices. Before I carry on, if you're new to the channel, you are blessed. You are blessed. I mean it, you are blessed. God bless you for being here. Please watch this video to the end. I encourage you to like it. Liking a video is sending a message to YouTube to say you stand by this Christian content. YouTube is full of all manner of ridiculous rubbish. And uh, this seems to be promoted up and up. You see, uh, and they're going up their current dream. But uh, with Christian videos, it's not getting that much popularity. Please do like it share the video and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't so for returning subscribers you're welcome again god bless you i appreciate you very much okay so carry talking about choices choices is a gift it's a precious gift i remember teaching the youth once and one of them asked the question we were talking about the fall of adam and eve and i did mention them about choices about free will actually it was the word free will i used at the time i remember there one of them asking me um why why did God give us free will? God shouldn't have given us free will. That way, Adam and Eve wouldn't have sinned, and then we wouldn't, we wouldn't have been in the predict predicament that we are in right now. And I said, yes, well, I understand why you feel, because sometimes I've felt that way or thought that way. But these choices are a beautiful thing that the Lord made. So that way, we are not compelled. Otherwise, if you are left without a choice in any circumstance, you go to a restaurant, and it's only one food on the menu, and you have no choice whatsoever, how would you like that? You wouldn't like, you're compelled. That is what it means. It's like you're compelled to eat this thing, whether you like it or not. But God being a loving father, and remember we are created in his image. He doesn't want to constrict us and, and tie us down to a particular option or, or, or he doesn't want people who serve him just because he made them serve him. He wants you to choose to obey him or not to obey him. Choices are beautiful. Choices freeze us. Choices give us dominion. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper today. Um, and I'll start with the scripture. Okay. And uh, I'm going to read to us Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 30, verse 19. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. He says, I, from verse 18, I'll take it from verse 18. He said, I declare to you today that you will surely perish if you shall, sorry, you shall not prolong your days in the land that you're crossing to Jordan to possess. And then verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. You see here, Moses is saying to them, I have said before you in verse 15, he, he made a similar um, statement to say, I give you today, you choose. Choose, yeah, what are the options? What are the options that we have as people? We don't, we, we seem to have loads and loads and loads and loads of options. Let me start that first, say that first before I read here. It seems like, in fact, more than ever before, I said that in the, in the previous video, that more than ever before, we are so presented with so many choices, so many ridiculous choices, choices of meals, there are new meals that have been invented, and new ways of cooking, and you, if you want rice, you can have several varieties of rice, you want pasta, there's several varieties of them. If you're from Africa or Nigeria, where I come from, you also have, if it's soup, you have variety of soup. Okay, so if you can just as much as stretch your imagination, you'll be able to even uh, recreate new meals. So there are varieties of food, varieties of restaurants, variety of, of, of social media platforms. There are lots springing up every day that you and I are probably not even aware of right now. 
you have loads and loads of options when it comes to clothing, when it comes to shoes. Sometimes you get confused and lost in the options because there are so many. There is a high tint competition between the for uh, with the um, on the commercial realm that you're seeing. You know, so many. Even if you turn into this YouTube. Okay, there are several options. There are several options. If you want to listen to message, listen to music. If it's music, there are several platforms that you can go to. The options are endless. They are endless. They seem to be endless. But you see, actually, these options are two. They are categorized under two headings. And what are they? Moses said to the children of Israel, he said, you know what? There are so many things you want to do, but look at, there are, there are only two options to you. And these options are, as I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Life and death, blessing and cursing. So it's up to you, which one would you want to choose? So what you have is life and death. So if you want to live, if you choose life, then what comes is blessing. If you choose death, then what comes is, is, is cursing. Okay, so these are the options between you and I. Honestly, every single day, as I said, we have options, but those options are actually in two categories. All of them are pointing to life or death, blessing or cursing. How have you been choosing thus far? Okay, I'll quickly read for us again another scripture. This time around, it is Joshua speaking again to the children of Israel. And Joshua said to them in uh, Joshua 24, verse 15, he said, But if it is unpleasing in your sight to serve God, then choose for yourself this day. Remember the word again, choose. Choice is being raised there. He said, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father served be, um, beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua is saying here is that you make a choice. All this hopping between two opinions, like um, even Elijah said that later. I said, why are you hopping between two opinions? Choose. Make a choice. Some of us are hopping between opinions. But the truth of the matter is that your refusal to choose one way, inadvertently, you are choosing the other way. Okay, let me show, tell you. Let me give an example of what I just said now. When you refuse, for instance, for somebody who refuses to um to eat healthy what you are choosing is sickness so he said no i didn't choose sickness no that's the you know what um what's his name moses was saying earlier he said see this thing is about life and death blessings and cursing so one of them when you choose because i said that again last time in the last video please if you haven't watched it i beg you go and watch that that is an intro into this one to say that we are you have a choice he said, whatever you choose, you can choose whatever you choose, but the only thing you can choose is the consequences. That part is, is set or cast in stone, <laughs> more or less, the consequences. For instance, someone who chooses to jump up a, a six-story building, it's your choice to go fall of it. But you cannot determine to, that you're not going to fall there, except you have put something else, you know, to catch you, a trampoline or something down there, cushion down there to catch you or something. Otherwise, you're going to crash. The law of gravity is going to set in. You're going to crash. You're going to break your head. You're going to break your back. You're going to break your legs. You're going to break something. All right? But for that choice you made, you are also choosing something. Injury, you're choosing death. So your choice, once time you choose something, you are also directly or, in that, or indirectly, more or less directly, I would want to say, you are choosing the, the consequence, the direct consequences that come as a result of it. In law, we say something about, in law of thought, we say something about causation, you know, cause and effect, and also, I, mean, I think cause and effect, that's in, in, in um, economics. So there are something that will always, when you choose something, you're choosing the other. The reason why God is bringing this to us, so that we are mindful that every single time there is a choice before us, and this frees us, and truly, this, you know, Adam and Eve, they had a big business of, um, of blaming each other, you know, when God asked Adam, Adam said it was Eve, asked Eve, Eve said it was the Satan. And that's exactly what we are doing today. When we don't take responsibilities. A lot of times, you know, like I said, I had a fever. Someone said, oh, um, it's not fair when you say uh, we all have um, choices about what happened or the outcome of our pain. Some people handle things differently than others. And I quite agree with that. I agree. 100%. Some people handle things, pains better than others. But what I wanted to say, and why this topic is so important to have this understanding, the reason why someone handled it better than the other is because of the choices they made. As harsh as this sound, 
the truth as is the truth. It is the choices. How they well equipped to make the choices is another thing. And that's why when you take that responsibility to know that the outcome of what I am going through right now is dependent on me. It's in my hands. That will help you to begin to choose rightly. That will help you to equip yourself. It will help you to learn. If there's something you need to go and learn, you know, there's something called the emotional intelligence, understanding how you are emotionally. Some people break over. Maybe they have a breakup in relationship. They are scattered. They go into depression and whatever. Some people have gone in through worse ones and they come out stronger. What's the difference? Is the choices they both made in it. What, how have you built your, your emotional life over the years? What have you fed yourself over the years? The Bible talks about the house on the rock and the house on the sand. And the house on the rock is, the, both of them were hit up with the same elements. The wind, the storm, the rain, everything came on both of them. One stood, one fell. Jesus told us that the reason why the one who still stood was because of his foundation. So when, instead of getting angry, excuse me, instead of getting angry about what I'm saying, what you need to do, is to, what this is targeted or is desired to do is to say, so what do I need to work on? What's going on with my foundation? Bible say, if you fall in the days of adversity, your strength is little. So if this brought me down, so what is the area of my life that I need to strengthen? What do I need to work on? Where each area of my character that do I need to work on? Which area of my spiritual life do I need to work on? What area of my life do I need to build on so that I can be stronger and resilient? There are some people that have lower immunity than other people. But again, you know, I'm using that as also as an example. So what do you do knowing that each time there's a flu season, you come down with the flu, you come down with this, we come down with that. What do they do? There, is, there are flu jabs, that you, there are options to you, flu jabs. That you could take, you could begin to take vitamins that builds up your immunity. You don't say, Oh, it's not my fault, that's how I am, that's how I'm created, and you know, I have low immunity. Da, da, da. When COVID came, it hit black people, black and the minority people more than the white, the, the Caucasians. Why? It's because of our build up, and then we cannot use that as an excuse. What happened? There was a huge campaign that went out, NHS went out with huge campaign, billboards everywhere, advising us on things that we can do as black race that will build our immunity. But if you ignore that and keep blaming your race, keep blaming you because I'm black, that's why this is happening, because I'm this, and there are options and things that you could do that could alleviate your situation and you refuse to do it, that's a choice you made. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. You need to work on your faith. You need to work on your temperament. You need to work on your attitude. You need to work on your perception. You need to work on your mind. It is your choice. You choose to do that. There are loads, you know, Joseph was faced with a situation. Joseph was faced with a situation whether to sleep with Potiphar's wife or not. And if he had, no one would have blamed him. People would have like, come on, it's Potiphar's wife. One, she was pretty. Two, the pastor's wife. So my hands were tied. There's nothing I could do. Some of us, that's how we excuse sin. You know, it was not my fault. There was nothing I could do. You know, if I had not said agreed, I would have lost my job. So I had to know you have a choice. You chose to do that. You could have walked in the way like Joseph did. And Rick's going to prison. But your choice, that Joseph choice that looked seemingly, that led him to prison, was the same thing that took him to the palace. I really hope we are getting it. Esther has the choice. Esther went into the palace. Thank God for Mordecai, like Moses, like Joshua, had given us this advice. You know, Moses said, but I can't sell you. Choose life. He can't make you make the choice. God can never make you make the choice. So the same thing Mordecai said to Esther. You, well, it's your choice. It's your call to make. But at the end of the day, do know that you are not going to be free from this. You are probably where you are there now for a time like this. So she could have chosen that. No, if I try it, I'm going to die and choose her life. Okay over standing up and defending or representing uh, her people, more or less. We all have choices. So I want you to consider either true life, the way you are living, things you are doing, and begin to think about the choices you're making. Finally, I'm going to read to us Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans 6, 6 from, from verse 15. I'll take it from verse 15. He said, what then shall we... He said, what then? It's a question being asked there. He said, shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Some people think that grace means you can carry on sinning, do whatever you want, you are covered in grace. This is a good question there. It's like, should we carry on sinning just because we are no longer under the law, but under the grace? He says, certainly not. Verse 16 said, do you not know that when you offer yourself 
as obedient slaves. You are slaves to the one who you obey. Whether you are slave to sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. So it's a, it's a, a choice is here before you as well. That's what he's saying here. He said, whatever you choose, you become a slave to it. If you choose, if you choose to obey sin, then you become a slave to it. And why does it lead? It leads to death. So just be a reminder, just your choices, just be mindful of where it's leading you to. And then again, he said, if you decide to choose obedience, it leads to righteousness, which will also lead to life. It's the same thing Moses said, Joshua said, that Paul is staying in a different way here. Don't ever let the enemy let, tell you you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. And I pray that you will make the right choice. Well, the devil sell that lie just so that he can rob us of our power. And you know another thing, knowing that you have a choice, the knowledge of the fact that you have a choice and using them is, is another, I mean, another positive, another good thing about having a choice is the fact that now you can stand up and say no. You can stand up and say no, I will not be knocked down. No, this circumstance did not come to kill me, but to make me. It didn't come to break me, but to make me. You can decide and say, no, I am not going to buckle under this pressure. You can decide that something good is coming out of this. You can decide and say, no, I am not going to lose my mind over this situation. You can decide and say, I, I, this, this is going to end in praise. Remember, you are made God. Your decision counts. God can make that decision for you. You can decide to live and not die. I don't care if you are watching me, what the, the devil, what you have been diagnosed with. But you can choose to say, I will not die, but live. Remember, the power of life and death is in your mouth. You can choose to say, I don't care how many people around me, young person, if you're a young person watching me, I don't care how many people, young people around me are indulging in sex, are indulging in immorality, and indulging in pornography. I will stand for righteousness. Joshua, I mean, what's Joshua? Daniel. Uh, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego they made a choice they chose not to eat what was offered I mean the king's best the king's delicacy that was offered to them they chose not to bow to the idol then they chose not to stop praying it was a choice they made God didn't push them to do it they made a choice so when you bow to that idol it wasn't because you had, you were, you had no choice that's what God is bringing. Not because you had no choice. If you bow to that circumstance, if you bow to defeat, if you bow to any circumstance and situation in your life, it's, the, it's not because you had no choice. It was because you had the choice, but you chose which one was easier. Start choosing to build your life now. Start choosing to invest in your spiritual life because you will need it. Because affliction, trials, persecution, it will come. You storm will come. So start working on it so that you are left, you, you are left because they say you're not working on it. As I said earlier, you're already choosing to fail. So that when that time comes, you will be standing. And I encourage every one of you going through whatever you're going through today. I encourage you to choose victory, choose success, choose triumph, because that is what has been offered to you. Choose healing, choose deliverance, choose salvation today, choose Jesus, choose obedience to God today. God, I hope this was a blessing and I hope I have clarified all those who were, you know, who came back and said, oh, it depends on, depends on this. Whatever it depended on, God will never allow what is beyond you come to you. He sized you. So in you, is in all those things. So make the right choice. Stand for victory. Stand for righteousness. Stand for what is right. Choose life. God bless you. I'll come your way again with many, many other uh, videos. I mean, our video diary already, we have tons of videos there that will bless you. Please go there and listen. They are sure there to bless you. God bless you. Don't even forget to, I mean, don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to share. God be with you. See you again soon. Bye-bye.